Hello there. Have you ever watched a film and thought this person would make a great project manager? I have, like, twice. So now I've written a list of five of them. This is five movie characters that would make great project managers. So before we get into the list, it's important to unpack what makes a great project manager. Are they organised, understanding, inspiring? There are a multitude of personality traits and organisational techniques that contribute to making a great project manager. So today we're going to take a look into the glamorous world of Hollywood movies to identify some of the best project managers. They are all from films that I've seen and chosen because it's difficult for me to choose project managers from films that I haven't seen. If you get to the end of this video and there's some project managers in films that you're aware of that I haven't mentioned, why not leave a comment and I'll maybe talk about them next time. I do have one rule, no biopics or biopics depending on how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. That being fictionalised or dramatised versions of real people's lives. It's fairly easy to assume that Mark Zuckerberg in The Social Network or Aaron Brockovich from Aaron Brockovich would probably be a great project manager. But today we're sticking to films that are purely fictional, made up from the mind of a person. Number one. Leonardo DiCaprio as Cobb from Inception. So we're starting off simple, which is ironic considering how complicated Inception is. For those who don't know, Inception focuses on a group of highly skilled specialists who invade the dreams of high value targets in order to extract information. Using almost magical technology, these specialists are able to participate in and manipulate the dreams of those targets. Naturally, hilarity ensues. Leonardo DiCaprio's Cobb acts as the project leader and assembles the team during the film. He aligns them all to a seemingly impossible goal of implanting an idea in a target's head. A dream. Mind. It's not the most straightforward film in the world. Now, while the deliverable behind their project is a little bit more out there than a standard business project, all the traits of a great project manager are still present within Cobb. He's confident, competent, and effective in a team environment. During the first act of the film, Cobb assembles his team. And what's most notable about this is the way that he subtly changes his communication style based on who he's talking to. When communicating with Tom Hardy's Eames, he's direct and focused on what the output of the project will be. While Eames, who clearly has the mind of somebody living in the real world, believes the task to be impossible, Cobb convinces him that it's not, because he's an effective communicator. However, when it comes to Ariadne, who's played by Ellen Page, who's a newcomer to his world, his communication style totally changes. He focuses on fundamentals, slowly introducing tasks that will ultimately contribute to the goal of the team. And he does this throughout the film. He slightly alters his communication style based on whoever he's talking to. Since poor communication is one of the most common reasons the projects fail, I'd say that he has that aspect in the bag. The communication, that is. Mine, on, on the other hand, could probably use some work. And in addition to all of that, Cobb excels when it comes to managing by stages, which we all know is a Prince 2 principle. Throughout their dream caper, is that, can, can we call it a dream caper? I like that term. Throughout their dream caper, Cobb and his team run into constant issues, which mean a change in timeline or scope. It wouldn't be much of a film if it all went really smoothly. I mean, it would, it'd just be about 20 minutes, I think. And before moving on to the next stage of the project, the team mostly reconvened to discuss what's going to change in the next stages based on the issues they faced in the previous one. Constantly changing with the context, I think Leonardo DiCaprio's Cobb would be a great project manager. I personally would follow him into Dreamland any day, probably. Actually, I probably wouldn't. Moving on to number two, Simon Pegg's Nicholas Angel from Hot Fuzz. Now I'm going to begin this with a quote from the man himself. There's no way you could perpetrate that amount of carnage and mayhem and not incur a considerable amount of paperwork. That sums up Nicholas Angel's attitude towards police work. He's, he's a by the book fellow. He's dedicated, effective and consistent. Now Hot Fuzz is the story of assimilating into a new environment, which is common for any project manager. You can't take every individual process and activity with you into a new role when you change, no matter how successful they were previously. The environment and context have changed, and therefore you have to too. And while it takes Angel a little while to learn this lesson, the whole premise of the film is about him learning it. However, he is aware, like any project manager, that some fundamentals, no matter the context, will remain the same. A good example of this is his all-powerful notebook, which he uses to thoroughly bamboozle some residents of the village. But he does also learn that some approaches need to be altered, like his willingness to fire two guns while jumping through the air. While he initially struggles to adapt to his new surroundings, which is a village that has a slightly creepy obsession with being village of the year and is overall a little bit culty, cultish, culty, cultish, it's cultish. They're a little bit cultish. At first, Angel struggles to achieve buy-in from his wider team, but he refuses to go back to London, which I interpret to mean abandoning his project management roots, which no good project manager would ever do obviously. As the film progresses, Angel slowly adjusts his priorities and processes in order to align his team to a wider goal, convincing them that while he might be an outsider, there's a reason he wears his stab vest in the pub. Take the Andes for example, two mustachioed magnificent men. Upon their first meeting, they appear as sarcastic and lazy and really will do anything to annoy him. They continually clash with Angel due to their attitude and their insistence that the country is more dangerous than the city. Everybody and their mums is packing round here. 
However, by the end of the film and all the adjustments that Angel's made, they're more than happy to storm a summer field with him. He also has to deal with the extremely common issue of dealing with an executive, or in this case a police inspector, that doesn't share the same vision as him. Although, rather than building a revised business case to convince his executive or police inspector, he instead finds out he's evil and then t takes care of the issue. Different approaches can always tailor your approach. And Angel, in fact, becomes a master of tailoring his approach. And he caught the swan, which should be a goal for any project manager. It is for me. Number three, Samuel Jackson's Nick Fury from the Avengers. He assembled the Avengers and aligned them to a goal. What goal was it, you might ask? To work together when we needed them to. To fight the battles that we never could to save the world. Now besides the fact that he runs one of the most secretive and advanced military agencies in the world, what would make Nick Fury a great project manager? There's got to be something. Simply put, defining roles and responsibilities. He's a master. In this aspect, this sets Nick Fury apart from any other character on this list. Nick Fury was able to take a list of individuals and identify exactly what roles and responsibilities those individuals should have in order to protect the Earth. Each hero he recruited was there for a specific purpose. None of them were there for fun. And almost none of them would function in the role of another. Iron Man can't be the soldier, Captain America can't be the engineer, and the Hulk can't be anything other than the Hulk. It's Nick Fury's ability to assess these otherworldly beings and create a situation in which they can all work together effectively for the benefit of an organisation or planet, and that would make him a great project manager. In addition, I'm almost certain that working to a strict timeline wouldn't be an issue for him. The kind of deadlines he's used to working with would normally result in mass extinction if they're missed, so I'm confident he could handle, say, a deadline based on an SLA. Plus, he isn't afraid to always update the World Security Council, who I refer to as the Project Board. He always keeps him informed on the status of his endeavours and thus manages his stakeholders very effectively. So while he may refer to it as the Avengers Initiative, all I hear is the Avengers Project. Now, these last three characters I've talked about all have specific personality traits that would make them a great project manager, but these next two I think would make all-round great project managers. There's nothing necessarily that you can point to and say this is one specific thing that would make them great, but generally speaking, they're probably phenomenal. Number four, Emma Watson's Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter series. Can you blame me? It's hard to find a reason that the long-standing companion of Harry Potter wouldn't be a great project manager. She's effective, organized, well-researched, dedicated, compassionate, what more could you ask for? She has the communication skills, the empathy, and the negotiation skills to achieve any project goal she's assigned to. Although a side note about her negotiation skills, there was that time that she punched another student in the face. But more importantly, Hermione Granger fulfills one of the most important and overlooked traits of a project manager, not always being the hero. The role of a project manager is making sure that everybody's in the right place at the right time to achieve the right outcome. To say Hermione does this effectively would be a major understatement. She drags two adolescent boys through their trials and tribulations using abilities that they only dream they had, all while having her priorities firmly in order. While Harry and Ron are messing about driving a car through the woods chasing spiders, she's in the library researching how to survive a giant snake. I know it's called a basilisk. While Harry and Ron are struggling against vines, she's cool and relaxed and falls straight through them. Another side note, don't do that in real life because it won't work. Most importantly, later in the film, Hermione has everything they need ready to go when they go on the run, all in her bottomless purse. It's like Mary Poppins. Hermione Poppins. I'd watch that film. She allows others to fulfill their roles all without a hint of jealousy because she understands the ultimate goal, keeping the guy with the glasses alive. And finally, Harvey Keitel as Mr. Wolf in Pulp Fiction. Now this one should have been expected. His character is literally that of a project manager. He says, get it straight Buster. I'm not here to say please. I'm here to tell you what to do. Now that would intimidate me if that was the first thing somebody said to me in a project meeting, but then I am a coward. Mr. Wolf's an interesting case. While his screen time during Tarantino's iconic Pulp Fiction is admittedly limited, when we do see him, he exudes efficiency and organization. In fact, one could argue that during the film, we see him organize and run his own project. He's presented with the oh so common problem of a messy dead body in a car, and he immediately goes into project management mode, which is why if I'm ever in that situation, the first person I'll be going to is my project manager. He defines the roles and responsibilities, describing exactly what he needs everybody to do, how they need to do it, and when they need to do it by. He reminds them of the goal and focuses on the product, which in this case is a clean car without a dead body in it. Constantly reminds everybody of the timeline they're working towards, which is admittedly tight because of the nature of the issue they're dealing with. In terms of the timeline, one great thing he says is, if I'm curt with you, it's because time is a factor. I talk fast, I act fast. If there was a Britain's Got Talent or an X Factor for project management, this guy's going straight to the live finals. We even get to see him communicate with an emergency supplier for assets he needs. That being blankets, bedspreads, quilts, to cover up the body. 
There's no issue that could arise that the wolf wouldn't be prepared for, although his risk register is probably a mile long. Clearly experienced in this type of project, the wolf is a phenomenal example of a project manager, even if his projects are somewhat morally askew. You know, I'm beginning to think that watching film clips should be part of all Prince 2 courses, because it gives you a good idea of what project managers actually do in the real world. So that's it for this list in this video, I hope you liked it, but like I said at the beginning, if you do have any better examples of project managers in films, just let me know what they are, because I haven't seen every film. I've seen a lot of them, but not all of them. See you next time.